Welcome back to Switch to Linux. This is Tom. So we are back on the Solace desktop. Um, I'm actually about to wipe this so I can uh, put a uh, uh, new Ubuntu daily build on here. Uh, check if there's any progress on that. But I wanted to, uh, before I wipe this out, so sorry it's only been like two days since I released the other video, but there's some, some comments that I received on the first video that I wanted to follow up on. Um, there were certainly some some people who uh, graciously pointed out some things I was looking for and could not find. Um, and then there were a few rude people too, so I'm just going to go ahead and leave your rude comments up there. Just go ahead. The only way I'll really tear a comment off if you're rude to me is, you know, if you put vulgarity in there, yeah, I'll, I'll delete it. If I could edit it, I'd edit it, but I can't, so I'm just going to delete. Um, so... The couple things that I missed here and, and why I missed them. So the first thing, um, if you didn't check out the initial video, it's the pros and cons of Solus Linux, a nice fresh distro. And, you know, and I think that my overall impression of the video was that, you know, it's a it's a good distro. It's simply not for me. And there's there's several reasons. Um, but uh, so I wanted to look at the the couple comments that I had here. And uh, so this gentleman here, EA Black, he gave me a lot of uh, a lot of good things here, and uh, I appreciate these comments most of all. So here is he's telling me how to find LibreOffice, um, the entire suite, all at once, because I had said in the previous video that yeah, I had to install the components individually. And so I wanted to look at this and verify this, and I did find that this is indeed correct. Um, but let me tell you why I missed it. Um, when you are looking for software, especially as a person, if you're, you know, building a, a Linux platform or if you're just under the mode of, you know, one of the ways that we as people work is by looking for patterns and things that we recognize. So if I come over here to office software and I hit my office software, I have a list of packages. So if you are used to these package softwares, which this is sort of like a, uh, the software center here is sort of like a, an amalgam between your synaptic package manager type thing and uh, which it's not um, and and uh, a typical uh, platform where I can see that there's certain programs here with the icons here's the reason why I missed the full LibreOffice and it is down here I, I did confirm it is right here so if I clicked on this guy here it should install everything of course we have this one we have this one let's see Oh, this is this is all this is the base. Okay, so what I was looking for and why I missed it is all of these files here are generally you know dependencies or things like there's the help files um, are coming in there uh, and that's those are the types of things that I wasn't looking for. What I was looking for is the basic LibreOffice icon, and so I just came down here and I clicked it and went to install this because that's what I was anticipating and as you look through this you'll see that the only one of these individually that has their icon is the writer you'll see that impress and draw and the spreadsheet do not even have their icon attached so that's actually why I missed it but this is indeed correct if you come down here you do a search for LibreOffice dash all uh, you will actually find it and you should be able to install the entirety of LibreOffice here and of course this is the only component that I did not install on my initial runaround. So there uh, we are going to uh, go ahead and install that so that is why I missed that part um, thank you for pointing that out um, that is excellent um, of course this guy here is the uh, passive aggressive guy I feel sorry for this guy it makes me mad when Reviewers complain about issues that can be solved by a 15 second Google search. Well, first, I don't use Google. Deal with it. Um, <laughs> you start page. Um, but, you know, I'm, my objective is not to set this desktop up. I, I'm not going to, in the middle of a first impression, uh, a, a quick first impression system here, I'm not going to go on to, onto an internet search and, and search for the things. What I'm looking for is how well is this thing put together? If I'm familiar with operating systems, if I'm familiar with Linux, I might come over here and just type settings and say, okay, can I turn on my desktop icons? Now, as I had mentioned, and somebody said that there's a lot of things utilized in the GNOME stack for the, for the, uh, the desktop environment that they're using here, their custom system, which I like their custom system, by the way. Um, but there's a lot of artifacts from GNOME. And the thing that I had stated in there is that to turn on desktop icons, if they are not enabled by the distro by default, you actually have to use the GNOME tweak tool to do that. And so let's just have a quick look to see. And uh, I was pretty sure I did, but um, my imagine, I, I imagine that 
tweak tool is probably not something that's available. Oh, it is. There's the GNOME tweak tool. Okay, let's install the GNOME tweak tool. Let's see what that does. I don't remember looking for that. Um, so there, you know, it may not be really based on uh, GNOME necessarily, but there's the GNOME tweak tool. I'm betting that I can probably turn everything on. So here I can turn on desktop icons by using the tweak tool. But what I did not know, um, and the reason I did not know this, um, well, let me get into what I did not know, is if you come over to your, notif and, and I saw this as a notifications panel. I'm not looking for settings over here, but over here is a very nice, very comprehensive settings panel. And uh, we'll walk through that in a second. But the reason I wasn't looking for this over here is, and my argument was, if this is a good desktop, we might see it in the settings. Why can we not access this that settings panel at all from in here or have some reference to it? Because what this feels like, I'm going to say it, I'm going to say it, brace yourself, this kind of reminds me of Windows 10. We have the old settings in the control panel over here, and then we have the new Metro settings up panel over here. And then now you got to figure out what settings are where. And so now I have to come into here for some of the settings, I have to come over here for some of the settings. Nevertheless, this settings panel is actually quite awesome. But again, it's very reminiscent of the Windows 10, actually Windows 8 as well, or you have to go over here to get the settings menu. <sighs> kind of annoying but anyway once you actually come down here you can actually turn these on and uh, you can turn on or turn off your um, your various settings here and um, I really like like this here gives me the flat look which I don't like I actually really like their their theming here it looks sort of flat but not really and they actually give you um, all those are the widgets uh, they give you the ability to change your icon themes as well and so here, this is fun. Here, here's your GNOME menu back. <laughs> More evidence. <laughs> um, just kind of uh, picking on that a little bit. But you can change all of your icons over here, which is which is cool. Um, if if you follow my videos, you know I'm not a huge fan of these of these flat icon looks. Um, but in this case, I didn't mind them nearly as much. I'm not super hung up over it, but uh, I do like that we have the option to change your icons in there as as well. Which one was our default? There we go. There's our default. All right. So you can change all your settings over here. Uh, you can change your cursors here. Now under the background, and this this is kind of like this seems to me a little poorly implemented. I think background is changing this but under background is where I can turn on my desktop icons but once I turn on my desktop icons I can now right click and I can work off of my desktop and that was one of my one of my larger complaints about the platform is that I could not work off the desktop well I stand corrected I can work off the desktop it's just the settings panel was not exactly where I was anticipating it to be nevertheless it is there it is enabled and uh, that is a nice platform. The other thing you can do is, um, I liked their implementation with this on the top, but you can actually move that panel to the bottom if you want. Um, that was a very nice uh, system. And this, in fact, if I were to be using Solus as a um, regular system, this is actually how I'd set it up, just because I'm more familiar with this, this basic setup. But overall, um, I did miss this settings panel over here, so I thank you guys for pointing this out. And I did want to do a follow-up video, especially before I destroyed this distro, um, to indicate that, that yeah, there is a, a lot more that, that you can do with the settings panel. And it is, uh, it is there is a lot more in here than, than uh, I initially saw, which is cool. You can also turn on or turn off some skeuomorphic type um, effects here, which is cool. All right. So now we have the ability to uh, make those customizations. So this guy over here uh, is not just the notifications panel, which I was anticipating. There is settings over there. Again, why is the settings not referenced in there? And I did take a quick look on their website, and I didn't. it wasn't immediately obvious to me that there were settings over there, although maybe I should have read that more closely. See if there's any other comments here I want to look at real quick. Okay, so this, uh, Scott says here it's uh, not based on the GNOME shell, just uses some of the GNOME stacks. And then he also tells me we can uh, turn these on. And again, you know, I'm not 
completely deeply familiar with all these things because I do run a couple businesses too, so I don't read in fine depth of this. But that's kind of the freshness of doing a pros and cons uh, first impression type Linux distro review is that it shows you how somebody who's familiar with computers might look at it. And that's actually useful information for, for people looking at this. It, it very well, if the developers look at this, they say, oh yeah, maybe we didn't think of that. Um, this guy says Solus is much better like Ubuntu. Maybe that meant than Ubuntu. I don't know. I, I don't know. I think it just depends. Um, obviously, all of the software packages in, in Solus are going to probably work better. Ubuntu probably does have a lot of stuff in their software repository. Um, so, you know, whatever. I'm not going to make value judgments on that. Uh, I got another indication. So apparently I totally missed turning on the desktop icons. <laughs> so thanks everybody for that. Uh, this guy down here, uh, Anthony, he had a problem with the location and the keyboards. Um, can only choose a Dutch keyboard option. And then again, uh, Jay Steen replies that. Se select your location and then use the up and down keys. Uh, and then more locations are available. So I did have a quick look at that issue. And uh, I found it, it, even if you couldn't uh, change it initially, you can actually come over to your regions and language and you can change your input source over here. So although I do have it set up as uh, United States and, and English, I can still come over here and um, I can select other systems, although I'm not sure how many there are. What did he say? He's looking for Netherlands. So here he can select the Netherlands. So the location, well, that's input source. Um, so let's see. Okay, so he could select the Netherlands here, whichever one he's looking for, and then he should be able to change the keyboard independently. So this, I cannot recall if this was a, a separate section in the uh, setup of the program, but at least if you get the, the uh, software installed, then you should be able to go ahead and change it at least uh, like that. So let's see, I think that is everything. So that's kind of what I wanted to say. Uh, mostly uh, just point out that I had totally missed that there is a set another settings panel over here and these settings panel really add a ton to this desktop. Uh, this is a great thing. Um, totally missed it. Sorry I totally missed it, but uh, this is, this just, this makes Solace an amazing distro like it was already good this makes it amazing am I about to use it as my main no not really because it still has a lot of the gnome uh, applications like a, a lot of the gnome feel and I'm just not a huge fan of the gnome thing that's simply a personal preference um, it's just not a not a platform that that I like quite as much as, as the Linux Mint platform or and I'm even grown accustomed to Ubuntu which I'm running over here right now so it's just a matter of personal preference, but um, that is uh, that is a quick follow-up to the initial uh, video there. And uh, with all that being said, um, this is Tom, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.